Hey guys, so it's always long care service here. Uh, we weren't able to dump the other day after we cleaned up that big debris pile. Um, so I'm gonna go dump that now while they're still open. Uh, we have another job coming up this week actually, or a couple of them. We have a little bit of a gravel install. We have some grinding cleaning up from a guy who had a couple trees, a couple giant trees that were removed. Um, so we're just gonna go clean it up and put dirt in the holes. And then we have another guy who has I think like six stumps, or I'm sorry, five stumps. One of them is just, it's almost seven feet wide. And we're gonna go play around with those and grind them out and then clean them up later on in the week. So we gotta get this trailer empty. We gotta get the leaf box off later in the week. We're not gonna do that today because I need the guys here. Um, and then I'm gonna try to get the uh, Gorilla lift system installed on the gate just to help out a little bit. I'm not sure if one, one uh, Gorilla lift system, like the two bars, will be enough to lift that giant gate. Um, I'm gonna put them on there and see how it works. I want it to be super smooth uh, because we're actually pro we're planning on using that trailer this year for mowing. So that gate needs to go up and down like slick. So um, we're, I'm gonna test it out with two. Two should at least be able to let me get it up and down. And if need be, we might install a second set to make it just ultra smooth. So we're gonna try that out and see where we can get to the day before the rest of the day is over. So stay tuned. Alright, so the first little project here is going to be putting some of these uh, stickers on here. Now I know they're stickers and it's probably complete overkill putting giant screws into the sticker, but I don't want these to go anywhere. I mean, I don't care if I use a couple little screws. These are for indoor outdoor use, so it says. We'll see how well they hold up. Uh, basically this just says 5,000 pound capacity maximum. All three of my trailers are 7,000 pound trailer gross weight so they can haul. We, we try to fill them with only 4,000 pounds of material. 5,000 is kind of a max, but they have lots of walls on them, which makes them heavy. So we try to go more towards like 4,000, 4,500. Now we did have a slight issue this year um, where one of the trailers did get filled with five tons of material, 10,000 pounds. Um, it was remedied before it left the yard, but there's just a miscommunication uh, with employees to the operator who was calling out to the yard and then the person who was filling it in, no one really stopped the process of filling up these trailers with 10,000 pounds of material. So we're gonna put these on here. Uh, we already, we've, we've discussed it as a team and we're just hoping that uh, putting these stickers on here will help remind everybody uh, involved in the loading process at a yard and in our trucks that we have capacity limits. So we're gonna try this out here. Looks like they're just stickers, they came in a four pack. So I'm not gonna put them up high because this top of the this top area is actually gonna get removed. So it looks like for my best interests, we're probably looking at like right here. You know, they're actually staying on pretty well. I don't think I'm actually even gonna use, I was going to use uh, screws just to make sure it didn't fly off. You know what, we have them. I'm just gonna throw them in there anyway, just so it looks more. I don't know, more secure. They can't fly off when they have screws in them, right? Doesn't hurt the sticker. As I said that, it breaks the sticker. Well, that absolutely did not work. Well, it happens. Let's see, I have four of them, so I have two extras. So if that comes off, this is just gonna be an experimental run. Don't worry, Chris is verted, found the screw on the ground. So yeah, we're just gonna stick these stickers on here fast. Just got a whole bunch of these, just in spots where you see loading happening a lot. Except I don't know how long they're gonna last, but a little bit bigger. I 
they're really cheap. Just gonna throw it on the other side fast. Yeah, they have giant plastic ones, they're like 15 bucks each. It'd be like $30 per trailer. And for the safety of the trail, trailer makes sense. <clears throat> but I'm only gonna get those, you know, as I need them. Oops, there we go. And they only ever really load them on one side. But I'm just putting them on both sides out of an abundance of caution. If they fall off, they fall off. I was gonna secure them with some screws, but that, that failed horribly. Just probably went too close to the edge. All right. I'm mean, gonna have uh, two extras. So I might try to do another test over here just to see if I can get it to stay in. But for now, this is fine. It's actually kind of difficult finding little signs like this. I know if I put this one there, it's gonna be covered up by the the scoop shovel when it's here, but it's not that big of a deal because they always dump they dump it on the other side. I'm just doing this out of uniformity. We'll see how long that stays on this year. If it helps, it helps, you know? Now this old plow is just an absolute turd. I think I paid like 400 bucks for it. Um, the uh, one light, the, the brackets broke on it and um, it's taped on right now because the first time we used it in a storm. I'm just gonna kind of do this at an angle so we can get it bent here better. But I'm going to figure out how to fix that light. At a later date. Because I had Gorilla Glue on it, but that did not hold very long. I'm just hooking these because I'm probably going to be using this plow for a minute. And we have a landscape job coming up. Oh. Got to get the plug out of the door. You always make sure you keep your plow ends covered up here. Now so I don't have a repeat of the other day. Let's make sure this hook is off. Oh yeah, that's way off. Okay, cool. It's a quick friendly reminder. Don't forget to check your vehicle registrations. It's that time of year for a lot of businesses. You know, I'm driving around with expired plates. I actually forgot for a couple days myself. But, uh, 
getting it taken care of. All right, so full disclosure, I've actually never built one of these things before. So we're gonna, and this has been sitting here for weeks. So we're gonna make sure that everything is still in the pile here. And then we'll get down to building it. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> First of all, this is for something else. So we got these guys, one of each. I'm just gonna put the stuff in the trailer. It's going to be easier to reach in there than having it balanced precariously on top of this wheelbarrow I haven't put together yet. This wheelbarrow will be in a review eventually. It's one of the, the um, Tor Warrior wheelbarrows. It's been sitting here for a minute, but I'm going to get it together here soon. All right, let's see. So these are the bolts I'm gonna use for this assembly. I'm gonna put it on a wood rail as opposed to drilling it like it states to do. Um, just the, the thing is, it just, it's, the gate is so massive. It just wouldn't make any sense mounting it where it normally would. Like the normal mounting position is right here. You have like a foot of gate under you and it, it just wouldn't make any sense. So I'm gonna go through this pile here. I'll just keep you over here aimed at this. Yeah, so hopefully with putting it up here, it'll have a lot better leverage and I'll see if I can get away with having just one set of them. If I have to do, you know, a quad set, I don't think anybody normally does that. I've never seen this trailer with it set up like that, but if we need to, we're gonna do it. It's kind of during rush hour here and with no trees or no leaves on the trees, um, the road's actually kind of loud. A lot of cars and semi-trucks come by, so hopefully this mic is uh, deterring some of that sound for you here. And we're not too loud, it's also a little bit windy today. Okay, so it says begin on the driver's side of the trailer. Place and align the housing A. Angle and square this power sticker. So we're gonna put this guy up here. And I am gonna put these a, a little bit out. Uh, because this is a two inch tube and it's going into an inch and a half of the two by four. So I don't want to run into an issue with the nuts on the bottom of the bolts on it kind of funky on the, on the carriage bolts. So I already read this spot a couple months ago. Let's see. It's basically once you place it on there, you measure one at a time. You just have it back like about a quarter inch, half inch back. I'm not going to go fuss over it too, too much. There we are. Quarter inch back from the edge of the trailer, the trailer side. Make sure the stickers are lined up on the same side facing to the outside of the trailer. Now the housing is straight and level on the rail. It's on a two by four. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. And flush against each other. You're working on the driver's side of the trailer. It's reiterating. Move housing A from the rail without disturbing the B placement. Mark the center of the housing B hole mounts. So that's about as close as it's gonna be there. So we're gonna move A. And I know I'm moving it, but now I have a visual of how it looks in the rail. Silver Sharpie, yeah, using black Sharpie on stuff, you know, where it makes sense and then using a silver one on anything you got a mark like this or on air filter or oil filters for mowers. Uh, silver Sharpies are amazing to have around. Moving just the front one. I think that puts us in business there. Okay. Like how that went. Mark center of the housing before placing a house onto the side rail without disturbing placement, la da da da. 
drill half inch holes, which are oversized, down through the side rail, or in this case, the wood, where you made your marks. Insert the 5 16 bolts, which are now aftermarket. They were two and a half inch. I got four inch ones instead. Okay, and it basically just states that you need to make sure after drilling a half inch hole that the bolts are, are seated in there because they're carriage bolts. If you don't use carriage bolts, you just gotta make sure that the square is inside of that square or bad things will happen when you tighten it on. All right, I need to get a half inch drill bit. Be right back. It's nice they give you so much playroom in this application here. Okay. Just gonna go to town here. Naturally, right on top of a screw inside of the thing. I moved it just the hair of where I had it before and hit screws. As long as it, I, there's just tons of screws going along this whole thing. As long as I didn't hit it too hard, it'll come right out. That easy. Okay, let's commence again. You know, one of these days I'll mount something how it's supposed to be mounted and I don't have to get any aftermarket hardware, but today is not that day. batteries, dolls out, get out. So you get for using the batteries that have been out in the cold weather. I'm gonna change that out fast. Now this one is sitting on a trickle charger so we shouldn't have that problem. Safety work first, uh, wear gloves when working with drills and wood so you don't get splinters. Just in case you didn't know. But after I get a splinter, I'll put some on. Man, I'm two for two. Another screw. I guess I could have looked beforehand. Makes entirely too much sense. I know where there's 40 some screws along this whole thing. It's fine. Okay, this one doesn't have any screws. I mean, these are my older batteries, but this one should not be at two already. I'm gonna read the manual just in case there's something changed, but I'm fairly sure. Insert mounting bolts, washers, nuts, slide da 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 Okay, cool. actually um, well let's just say that the bolts they only sold them up to four inches and that wasn't enough so
slide the spring cable assembly into the housing A and B. So the springs at the end of housing B and the cable is coming out angle A. Makes enough sense. Loop ends of both the inner and outer spring. Okay, so this was like that, yeah. Half inch pin. I actually used one of these things before. It's locking ring. Interesting. It's that funky pin. Okay. So that's in there. Over here. It says we have to use the quarter inch clevis pin. Looks like we're using two rollers. One on the top. <laughs> Duh. Gotta put it in here. There we go. And then one on the bottom. It looks like we just kind of repeat the idea here. One and two. And there she is, all good. Raise the cable just enough to take the slack out of it. Okay, so now we gotta do the other side. All right, now that everything works so smoothly on the other side, we're gonna try to do this the uh, fast way here.
This is just a test to make sure everything's loose and easy. I'm supposed to go halfway down. So whoops. I guess I'll at least be able to feel if it uh, has any resistance. Cause I could not, this is a two person gate before, absolutely. Man, I gotta replace these pins with something bigger. Here goes nothing. So let's just lower it down slowly, halfway. Okay, that's cool. I, I had to hold this to two people before. <laughs> the gate's saying, help me, because that's not how it's supposed to install. You can tell there's a lot of weight on this. Okay, that's halfway down. Let's put it back up because the gate is struggling right now. I guess that means we can uh, go ahead and bolt it on. I got my cutting tool coolant, my really good half inch bit, not the other one, the other one's like a Dewalt one, and my punch. So let's see what kind of chaos can make happen here. So the cable is about, oh, about yay high. Now I said if you make this too high, you're gonna be in a world of hurt and you're gonna need two people to try to get it on there, which makes sense. I might throw some gloves on for this because A, metal shavings are not fun and B, it is getting cold out here. One second. But I don't want to go straight to a half inch bolt or a half inch drill bit. I'm going to start her off with a smaller one. It's like, let's be smart about this. I know it's cold and I'm kind of not trying to rush it, but uh, it went from 40 to like 30 something real fast. These are my drill press bits. All right, I'm just gonna do one side at a time, just make sure we got everything working out here. Okay. So 
there's supposed to be a big old big old bolt here and there she is they really made that I mean it's a big sucker All right, so half inch. Put that over there. Half inch outside. Looks like it made it with just, just enough tension, not too much. I'm gonna make sure I read that right, because there's a lot of, they supplied a lot of half inch washers. Let's double check that. Okay. Slide a half inch wash flat washer onto the half inch, five and a half inch gate bolt. Slide the cable onto it on the attachment bolt. Put a half inch flanged locking nut, smooth end first onto the half inch. And tighten the night onto the front. You might have to adjust the nuts location on gate attachment bolt back slightly in order for the cable to pull as straight as possible. Insert gate and attachment. Okay, so they want you to do a lot here. So they want you to put that And they want you to thread this guy on. Okay, I think I got it now. So washer, cable, washer, flange nut, washer, flange nut. It's a lot. But again, I don't work with cables, but it kind of makes sense now, you know, you wouldn't want the cable riding up on there. Okay, I think I get it now. So it's gonna have a little bit of play then. I'm basically just making a bracket. Let's see, one, two. Three, okay. Just double checking here. Yeah, okay. Well, they said to tighten this on, but I, I mean, I guess I can, but it's not gonna go anywhere. I mean, there's a flange nut there, so. It's just not quite how I'd do it, but whatever. I guess it keeps it away from the gate. I might be horribly construing what they want me to do here, but that looks, looks like what they said. So, you know, I'm not gonna take this off again because I think I have enough half inch washers. I think they wanted this on the other side. Like one on the outside, one on the inside. That's just strange. I'll, I'll, I'll use it for what they want me to do now. They want me to stick this on here. So effectively I've used more, one more washer than they want me to use. But I'll figure that out later. 
I'm gonna go see if I have any more half inch washers in there sitting around. That's, I don't understand. That's a weird, weird, weird way to do that. All right, beer back. All right, it is all good though. I had a couple grade eight half inch washers lying around from another project. So we're just gonna put more washers on here than they want. And they're just gonna deal with it. Yeah, this is a pretty cool tool. It's kind of like a crescent wrench on steroids. Okay, I guess not a crescent wrench, but you know what I mean. Let's see here. It just right to the size of the bolt. Now, correct if I'm wrong, pretty sure because this flange, I'm not gonna have to use a crescent on the other side. So we're just gonna tighten this sucker on here. Oh yeah. And the wise words of every man everywhere, that's not going anywhere. Gotta love when the junk pile provides. I have my fourth washer. It was just, I, had a, I dropped a glass jar the other day that was full of just bolts and nuts and stuff like that on the floor. I haven't cleaned it up yet. One half inch washer was sitting right in the middle of it. So now it'll be symmetrical. Didn't need to do that, but it's symmetrical. Now remember, last time I did this gate with one, or you, you couldn't, I mean, you pretty much had two people and if one person accidentally let up too fast, it was a struggle bus. That's a good start. Well, that's pretty beautiful so far. Let's keep it going. Oh, it's wonderful. It's actually pulling it up. That's amazing. I know you can like allegedly adjust this down. You know, I don't think I want to. There's so much pressure on there. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that. It actually is lifting the bottom off the ground. This gate is like ridiculously heavy. All right, check this out now. I know people have used these before, but one finger. No fingers. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, well that's about it for projects today. The grill lift system so far is better than I thought it was gonna be. That's crazy, you can do a one finger lift on the stupid thing. Like it can just float in midair too. Pulls itself off the ground. I'm sure it will loosen up over time, but I mean, you can always get another one. But just for this little system, it's like 180 bucks. It, that's, it's, just, it's just crazy. But uh, that's all for today. Uh, stay tuned, later this week we're gonna have a bunch of stump grinding gravel install on just a little bit of a driveway patch basically uh, putting down some dirt cleaning up a whole lot of uh, stump grindings and yeah we will see you next time thanks for watching